columns, which ones that you actually mistakenly posted uh, the right number. Okay, so specifically the second and the third will be the ones that we consider as shortcuts. So here's an example. Let's say the company generated cash, received cash based on providing service revenue to customer, and for example, it worth $500. So for this transaction here, we'll be debiting cash because we're receiving cash. We'll be crediting service revenue. This is the correct case. And if we post this to T accounts, let's say earlier we mistakenly posted this $500 to the credit side, and we also posted service revenue <laughs> $500 under the credit side. So at the end, when we summarize all the information, you will see under trial balance, if this is the only transaction that happens, for simplicity purposes, let's say this is the only transaction that occurred, then you see under trial balance, the left side there's nothing, the right side there's two 500s. So at the end, this will affect final balance to have a difference that is actually the double of this error amount. So the difference is here, 1,000 minus zero gives you $1,000. This is the total balance difference between debits and credits. If you divide this dollar amount by two, this will give you 500, which is exactly the dollar amount of the transaction that there is error. And specifically, the error is misposting it to the, the other side. So where it should have been debit, but you post it under credit, or the opposite, if it should have been credit, you posted it to debit, the error effect will double. Okay, so at the end of trial balance, if you see the differences, and if you try to divide it by two, and it gives you a dollar amount, it's evenly divisible, and it's likely that there is an error occurred based on posting the numbers to the wrong side. Okay, so this is one shortcut. You can try to divide it by two, and then the number that you get, the $500, or whichever number that you get, will likely be the transaction that has error. So you'll be, you can narrow down all the transactions in the past that relates to $500. So trace back those first. Now another type of error would be, let's say, a slide error or a transposition error. So that could be adding an additional zero or missing a zero. Okay, so if a transaction there was is supposed to be $1,000, again, for cash and service revenue, you have also $1,000. And when you post this transaction, when you recorded it, you actually missed a zero for cash. Assuming everything else is correct, then at the end, you will have a balance. Left-hand side is 100, right-hand side is 1,000. The difference is here is how much? 100 on the left thousand on the right, you will have a difference, nine hundred dollars, and this nine hundred dollars will be evenly divisible by nine. After you divide it by nine, you will get a hundred, which would be the transaction, the error transaction would be hundred dollars there. But this evenly divisible by nine either be that having an additional zero or missing a zero, or it could also be some of the transactions that you switch the digits. So for example, if you have recorded $1,200 of cash, but you mistakenly recorded as $2,100. You see the differences in between. The 900 is also evenly divisible by 9. Okay, so if you find trial balance, <clears throat> the ending balance is evenly divisible by 9. The difference is, it could be either one of these. But these are harder to trace compared to the um, type of error that you just posted to the wrong side. Because for switching digits, after you divide it by 9, the number really doesn't tell you anything. But after the fact, if you actually trace the transactions, you will realize that some of the digits you switched it. Okay, but a shortcut for a slide error, adding a 0 or missing a 0. If you divide it by 9, that will tell you the, the error number. Okay, so these are some of the shortcuts. To be honest, the most thorough way to find a transaction error would still be the first one. Tracing back to all the ledgers, making sure each and every one of them is posted to trial balance correctly, or is posted from journal entry to ledger correctly. Okay. <clears throat> Nowadays, typically, the um, accounting information systems will be able to help you 
When you journalize entry, usually it's automatically creating the ledger. So if you post something to same side, two of the accounts to debit side or two of the accounts to credit side, usually the application will not allow you to do so. Okay, but at the end, um, if you still have these transactions, if it's for small businesses that you're not really using the applications, it's likely you will still have these types of posting the numbers to the wrong side or simply another type of error will be using the wrong accounts. So those are even harder to trace. Okay, if you use the wrong account, it should have been sales revenue, but you posted another service revenue. But from trial balance, you can't detect this because the number are both under the credit side. So that would be an example that, based on these shortcuts, you're still not able to detect. Really, the most important thing is from the beginning. When you start from journal, post it to ledger, calculate all the information, the balance, the trial balance, that has to be done very thoroughly and very much in a lot of details. Okay, any questions? So today, the key takeaway is that you have to know, again, the debits credits rule. How does that apply to transactions? You need to figure out for each and every business activity, ask yourself, what are the accounts affected? Okay, now in this week's homework, there are just a few transactions that you may be able to see more than two accounts affected. So you see, based on the description, for example, corporation paid cash $1,000 to pay off rent expense $500, advertising expense 500, other types of um, expenses. So if you see more than one account, then just list them. Again, apply the debit and credit rule. Okay, the, the part of the account that is increased, whether it's debit and credit, that depends on different types of accounts. So assets is always the left, liability is the right, equity is the right.